All right, so we got the autopilot uh, installed. We tested it, what was it, last week um, on like the calibration, but there was no wind to actually use it. But we're now sailing, we're probably on a beam reach. Uh, let's see, we've got 12 knots right now and we're doing seven, six or seven knots. So that's exciting. Um, the ability to not have to stand at the helm all the time is great. And there's my lovely wife going for her joy ride as she gets to sit and look pretty and I do all the work. <laughs> Accurate. Ooh, hey. Time to check the rig. See what the tension is on everything. Right, let's see. That pin is stuck. Bad. Yeah, Arika's tensioned properly, at least on the starboard side, so I'm excited about that. Our nasty hatches that are like purple create some interesting lighting inside, but we got new ones to replace it hopefully this summer. Nice new carbon fiber or breakwater. Sunsets in the sky Won't let these moments pass us by Take my hand, don't be afraid You brighter days So when we took off earlier, I made Philip put the reef in and um, gee, I'm awfully glad he did that because we just need it so bad. Oh, hey, Philip, stop one sec. The reefing line is the... There you go. <laughs> I was like, why is the end of the boom going up? <laughs> That's why. All right, that is definitely a wind line heading for us, so that's pretty exciting, but... Um, Philip's currently whipping ends, so there's that. Trying to get a new reef line in. Yep. 
I don't think he's gonna make it because that wind line is rapidly approaching. It's, uh, you can't tell on the uh, camera, but it's like halved the distance, so we shall see. Alright, do you want to change direction so we can get the boom closer to center line so we can uh, pop that line out? Uh, that's up to you. I was hoping we could just let this wind fill in for a little bit, see what's going on, how much it is, and then do that. Is that okay? Sure. Because it looks like it's actually a decent amount of wind. So Maybe not that much, but... So, so here you go, Heather. So we've got... So negative VMG means we're going away from the wind. Yeah. So we've got... Our, ne our VM velocity may good is 1.5, and we're doing 1.6, so we're like... We're 1.6 and 1.6 right now. Yeah, so we're, we're like moving downwind at yeah. like... So we're doing good. If you we're, if we're trying to go straight downwind, we're actually doing pretty good. With the number of boat projects still longer than Santa's Naughty and Nice list, Philip used the lack of wind to replace our first reef line. Often people will remark that cruising is just boat work in remote places, and while we aren't cruising yet, we are practicing. So boat work while sailing is not an uncommon thing for us. After the jibe, Philip kept us sheeted in tight enough that he could reach the end of the boom and finished running the new line. New reefing line secured, and with just enough breeze to sail, we pulled out the Genoa and coasted downwind. For some reason, both with this jibe and later when we took our head sail down, even though the wind indicator claimed that the wind was coming off our starboard quarter, our head sail insisted it stay billowed out on the starboard side. With the warm air and cold water of Lake Michigan, we do sometimes get odd patterns and thermal movements that don't really follow conventional wisdom, and being near shore also causes an extra shiftiness and less consistent conditions. This specific day was also much warmer than usual, and that only exasperates the thermal issues. And we've never had that issue before, so while we took note, we also shrugged our shoulders, and if I may be punny, ran with it. Zoom on this thing? Okay. Never knew that GoPros had a zoom. Now oh, that's interesting. Taking our mainsail down, you can see the bizarre way our head sail started to backwind. You can hear a motor noise, but that was from the machinery dredging the channel, not us. So we're not motoring forward, and you can see the main initially held to port while our Genoa grows a mind of its own, and you can also see me looking up to check the wind indicator. Eventually the mainsail does get blown over to starboard, and then we gave up and jibed. As a side note, if the wind was up, we would have dealt with this situation much quicker, but with only a few knots of breeze coming from seemingly random directions, we waited to see if it would sort itself out. Clearly it did not. The traveler or the, or the sheet? 
snow the sheep. There's maybe a spider up there screwing stuff up. Or the both of them. That's a two. Oh. So this is Heather's closet, and then this is mine. And I put a little cubby piece up here because when you're inside the closet, there's um, it's just kind of like dead space up here from a like storage perspective. So it'll allow us to utilize that. Um, so I'm gonna 
Okay, see, I'm gonna cut this opening. And at some point I'll come back and I'll trim it so it doesn't look as bad. So then I have this, uh, this box to screw up behind there for just some storage, probably knickknack stuff, but it does add a little bit extra places to store things. And mine mostly is just some sailing gloves and uh, air horn. Now, earlier Philip commented on our purple hatches, and you can see in these shots how it distorts the coloring. Actually, if you go back to watch a lot of our boatwork videos, you can see, or you may have already noticed, that sometimes the coloring is off. The project list really is getting to be a small novel, but hatches that latch and aren't purple is starting to creep up towards the top. So I have it installed. So, and uh, it went in decently well. So it's kind of hard to even see it up there, but might interfere a little bit with the hangers and make it a little more difficult to install hangers, but I think we'll be fine. 